R2 Swan, Mars and a fast moving interstellar visitor. What exactly is racing toward the red planet and what will we learn when it arrives? Headlines talked about a fast moving object the size of Manhattan making a close pass. At the same time, astronomers shared fresh images of 3IAELAS, the third interstellar object observed from Earth, racing through our solar system. But the update that lit up control rooms was this. NASA confirmed that R2 Swan was speeding on a trajectory toward Mars. In one careful announcement, the story changed from a distant curiosity to a real-time event with Mars as the stage. The wording was measured, the implications were huge. R2 Swan isn't just a label, it's the key to how it was found. NASA teams had upgraded their detection networks, scanning wide fields of sky for transient bodies crossing the solar system. The Swan tag ties it to a specific survey effort, and R2 marks its place in the catalogue. That might sound dry, but the meaning is simple. This wasn't random. It was spotted, confirmed and tracked. And when the paths were run again and again, a clear exciting fact stood out. R2 Swan wasn't just wandering inward, it was heading toward Mars. From the first details, one word rose above the rest. Speed. Reports called out that R2 Swan was moving unusually fast, fast enough to invite comparisons with Oumuamua and Tuai Borisov, and fast enough to suggest either an interstellar origin or a strong gravitational kick somewhere along the way. A body that quick carries a story in its motion. Is it icy and full of volatiles like a comet? Is it rocky, a tougher traveller from far away? The answer decides not only how it will behave near Mars, but also what it can teach us about how objects thread their way through interplanetary space. The moment NASA confirmed the Mars trajectory, the mood shifted from casual interest to urgency. Mars is not a blank circle on a map. It's an active lab, orbiters circling, rovers crawling, and future plans taking shape. Teams behind Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and MAVEN began to run simulations. Could they catch it? Could they turn cameras and spectrometers in time? A body moving at high speed doesn't wait for slow planning. The window would be short. This wasn't a scheduled mission, it was a surprise that demanded quick coordination. Part of the tension came from Mars itself. Earth's thick atmosphere is good at tearing apart incoming bodies. Mars's air is kin. An object arriving at a high speed can cut deeper before it breaks apart or, if the geometry lines up, reach the ground. The announcement didn't frame R2 Swan as danger. Still, everyone did the basic math. Even without an impact, a near pass at that speed could carve bright paths in the sky, a natural light show over a planet we are watching with machines of our own. If the visitor is interstellar, like Oumuamua and Tuai Borisov, the opportunity becomes rare and precious. Interstellar objects carry the signatures of places far from our sun. Chemistry and structure made around other stars. We've only ever watched such visitors from Earth. This time, Mars offers a different seat in the theatre. It isn't just a target, it becomes a vantage point. The mix is almost poetic. A cosmic traveller from beyond and a planet full of our instruments ready to look up. Public reaction followed a familiar path. News anchors used the phrase, cosmic bullet. Animation showed a glowing streak crossing a red planet. Social feeds filled with short clips and wide eyes. The tone wasn't fear, it was wonder. People looked at the small red dot in the night sky and imagined R2 Swan racing through the dark toward it. That is part of the power of these moments. For a while, we all look in the same direction. Inside the science teams, debate started at once. Should orbiters be retasked to focus almost entirely on the past, spectra, imaging, dust measurements? Or should they stay on planned goals and take what they can without risking mission objectives? Most fell on the side of seizing the chance. It is rare for a natural event to line up so perfectly with a planet we have instrumented so well. The devices that sample air and map rock suddenly had a guess to record. The phrase too valuable to miss came up a lot. The trajectory became an obsession. Computers modelled the curve again and again, each pass adjusting small details. Would it skim past and give a simple, beautiful show? Or would it cut close enough to drag against the thin Martian atmosphere? If it carries ices like a comet, would sunlight heat it and throw off jets? Would an ionized tail leave temporary traces in Mars's sky? Each possibility added a layer to the plan. 
beneath the planning was a quieter truth events like these remind us who we are in a moving universe we map we predict we prepare then the cosmos sends a visitor we didn't expect on a path we did not choose and we have to adapt that the visit lines up with mars a world we are actively exploring feels like fate and physics shaking hands it's also a win for patience and engineering we build the tools now we get to use them size mattered less than speed here early observations suggested r2 swan wasn't enormous but a small body at great speed still carries huge kinetic energy measuring its brightness its color and any tail as it closes in can reveal its makeup doing that from mars not just from earth opens new angles it expands our catalog of these bodies in ways a single viewpoint never can the news also sparked conversations about readiness and planetary defense r2 swan isn't a threat to earth still its sudden appearance reminds us why we build and maintain detection systems that can spot fast movers headed for close encounters even when the line points to mars the lesson is the same this is a system in motion planets and smaller bodies dance and sometimes those dances intersect the more we learn from this pass the better we'll model the next one mars carries a heavy weight in our culture it's the god of war in old stories and the next home in new ones adding a real time sky event to that myth changes the feel again mars becomes a host a planet about to receive a guest from the dark that idea resonates it inspires people who will never touch an instrument to care deeply about what the instrument see one more difference from the old days stood out speed of information a century ago a discovery like this might have stayed in journals long after it was over now the world learns together and fast school kids hobbyists and professionals read the same official line at almost the same time people plan virtual watch parties the sense of shared participation makes a technical update feel like an adventure the tracking itself became a point of pride we weren't guessing we were measuring the path to mars was a product of careful observation and long practice behind the headlines sat rows of calibration routines synchronized clocks and teams of people aligning data across the world it was a quiet triumph of the survey networks and the people running them nasa stone stayed careful plain factual grounded in what could be confirmed but careful words can't contain imagination that balance is part of the dance of space exploration we keep our facts clean and we allow the wonder to spread here that mix turned a line of numbers into a global moment the question of origin added depth high speed in space carries a resume maybe r2 swan was eased loose from the far reaches of our own system the old cloud nudged for ages by weak gravity until it picked up a stronger push near a giant planet or perhaps it was born elsewhere a true interstellar traveler carrying the record of a star we've never seen up close if mars is about to be the stage for a visitor like that the stage matters even more it helps to remember how fast such visitors come and go umwa mua slid past quickly surprising everyone two i borisov gave a clearer comet show and then left both were watched from earth this time the difference is everything we don't just have telescopes we have rovers on the ground and orbiters above the planet the visitor will pass that means in situ observation mars as an outpost not just a backdrop that's why planning turned creative cameras that usually stare at canyons can turn to the sky spectrometers that sniff air can aim outward to taste a tail if it appears even craft meant mainly as relays can help with timing and tracking the challenge wasn't whether to look it was how to coordinate an orchestra across millions of kilometers for a performance that might last minutes instead of hours If R2 Swan carries volatiles, its warming near the sun could push out jets and build a visible tail. Imagine streaks of light over a thin sky, orbiters watching from above, and rovers pointing up from dusty ground. The rovers weren't built for sky shows, but it's hard not to picture their cameras catching a bright line across the stars. Machines we built, sitting silent on another world, recording a traveler from deep space. That image alone is enough to pull people in. Even if there's no impact, the planet could respond. Dust streams could brush the upper atmosphere and make faint glows. Maven could catch spikes in magnetospheric activity and add new data about how Mars reacts to passing matter. If enough dust falls, some grains could settle and mix with the soil. Future sample returns might find a layer from this pass, tiny relics from beyond the solar system delivered by chance. Part of what makes this feel special is how unlikely it seems. Space is big. Alignments are rare. For a fast mover to cross Mars's path while we have a full suite of instruments in place, some call that luck, some call it timing, everyone calls it an opportunity.
Scientists don't frame events in terms of destiny, but they do recognize a chapter heading when they see it. Models were refined as fast as data arrived. Would the body hold together under stress or would it fragment as it neared Mars? Fragmentation would make the show more complex. Smaller pieces would take slightly different paths, each one interacting with the thin air in its own way. Mission planners sketched out branches for those possibilities. Different instrument settings, different pointing plans, different timelines, all preloaded to gun without life commands. That brought another big constraint into focus. Mars is far, signals take time. There's no now button we can press. Everything has to be planned, tested and uploaded in advance. It's a rehearsal for deeper missions, where delay is the rule, not the exception. You don't react in those places, you prepare. The approach became a catalyst for unity around Mars. Missions that usually work in their own lens suddenly had a shared target. NASA and international partners like ESA began to sync schedules and plans. It stopped being a single agency story and became a global one. Every orbiter and rover became a note in one composition. Public energy flowed in behind the planning. Artists drew glowing paths over Martian valleys, teachers built lessons around speed, gravity and ice, amateur astronomers set up live streams, following updates and simulating the pass as best they could. The feeling that we were all leaning forward together returned, the way it does on big nights under the sky. Estimates of composition fed the conversation. If Swan is rocky, its endurance at speed tells us about toughness. If it's icy, then the question becomes how much material it will shed and what that says about how ices survive far journeys. Either way, it touches old debates about panspermia, the idea that the building blocks of life can travel between worlds. If ends up dusted by material from outside our system even a little, that will be a new line in that long discussion. Another thread grew around the idea of gravitational corridors. Every path in space traces the underlying shape of gravity. High-speed travellers like Swan sketch out lines in that invisible lattice. By tracing it carefully, we sharpen our maps of those corridors, knowledge that helps us plan the routes our own spacecraft might take when we go farther. In that sense, the visitor is also a teacher. The timing fits a larger human moment. Plans for crewed missions to Mars are on drawing boards in many places. Seeing a swift traveller aim for the same planet feels symbolic, like a herald arriving before a major event. It reminds us that Mars isn't a still target waiting for us. It's a world in motion, in a system in motion, intersected by travellers like Swan who add texture to its story. Strategy choices became urgent. Could perseverance and curiosity tilt skyward at the right seconds? Could MRO catch a streak with Mars below it? The technical hurdles are real. Pointing limits, power budgets, data rates, but the tone from the teams was steady. This is worth trying. You don't get many chances like this. Speculation reached into deep time. If Swan is interstellar, its atoms could be older than our sun, built in nurseries long gone. To measure that is to do a kind of cosmic archaeology. A traveller from another chapter of the galaxy's history, passing over a world we hope to walk, that image carries a lot of weight. All through this one fact state fixed. Predictions are fragile. You can refine a path to many decimals and still be surprised. Maybe it will pass closer, maybe it will flare in an unexpected way, maybe it will be quieter than we hope. Part of the draw is exactly that waiting to see which story the universe picks. Events like this tug at something basic in us. We spend most days focused on small circles, jobs, streets, screens. Then a message arrives that a fast object is rushing towards Mars right now and suddenly we feel the size of the room we live in. It brings awe back into reach. It reminds us that the cosmos keeps its own time and sometimes our clocks and its rhythms meet. It also asks a practical question. Are we ready to learn from surprises? The scramble to re-aim instruments showed flexibility and its limits. It sparked thoughts about building more adaptability into future missions, modes for unexpected visitor, plans that can switch fast when the sky sends something rare. That mindset may define how we explore as much as any blueprint. As the world absorbed the news, another simple truth settled in. This chapter on Mars won't be written only by engineers. It will be written by the universe itself. A swift, enigmatic traveller is coming. It brings data, it brings questions, it brings the kind of scene that reminds us why we look up at all. What do you think R2 Swan will reveal as it rushes past Mars? Simple comet physics at high speed? Hints of interstellar chemistry or something we haven't imagined yet? Share your thoughts in the comments so that we can compare notes. If this pulled you in, like the video, send it to a friend who loves the night sky and subscribe with notifications on. The moment it begins, I'll be here with the latest images and breakdowns.